Okay, this is a video on how to solve inequalities that you will frequently see on the GED. Okay, so the thing that comes up on your ready score is called uh, solve inequalities in real world problems that involve them and graph the solutions. So let's dive in. This video will show you uh, the basics of reading and plotting inequalities on graphs, using the extra rule to solve inequalities, and then using a method for solving inequality word problems, which are so common on the GED. So when we are just the basics here of inequalities, when we're looking at um, how to read them, remember we read left to right. And so when you come in this direction, um, this is wider than, so we call this greater than. It's bigger, it's greater. This is the, the pointy end and it's less than. So if we, if we are reading left to right and we come to the pointy end first, it's less than. If we come to the greater end, um, it's, it's going to be wider at the beginning. If it has a line underneath it, that means equal to. Same down here for less than or equal to. Okay, so there's the basics of just reading them. And now for graphing them, um, if you have a graph, and I'll show you an example in a second, you have a circle at the number, and then the, the line will be shaded in either to the right or to the left. If it's shaded to the right, um, and the circle is not filled in, it's just going to be greater than. If it is, the circle is filled in, it will be greater than or equal to. Notice that if you imagine this as the point of an arrow, it points in the direction that the um, values are true for that uh, inequality. So in this direction, it'll be less than. Arrows pointing to the left, and all the values that we want are to the left. Same with this one. Arrows pointing to the left, and it's equal to all the values that will fit that inequality will also be to the left on the number line. So here's an example. Choose the inequality that represents the following graph. <clears throat> so first thing is note that it's at number five. All of your answer choices are at number five. It is also um, filled in, so it's gonna be equal to, and so that immediately means C is wrong and A is wrong. Um, now, if you look at uh, where it is pointing, it is pointing to the left. So our answer will be B, okay? Um, let's move on. So here is the extra rule. So when we focus on inequality, solving them, you solve them just like you would an equation using inverse operations. But there's an extra rule. If you multiply or divide both sides by a negative, when doing inverse operations, you must reverse the inequality symbol. So keep in mind, if you haven't uh, focused on equations or linear equations, I have some videos for that as well. Um, that's where I really go into inverse operations and solving um, equations, which will benefit you for this video. Uh, so I'm going to go through that aspect fairly quickly. Here is um, two examples inequality that does not require the extra rule, and here's an inequality that does require the extra rule. Notice the similarities. So you have 3x plus 15 is greater than 30. This one is negative 3x plus 15 is greater than 30. So I'm doing this so that you can see um, when we use the rule and when we don't, because I've worked with a lot of students and sometimes um, it can be confusing to know when you use the other rule, uh, and so this I think will show up pretty clearly. So what's happening to x here is it's being it's having 15 added to it and it's being multiplied by 3. So we're going to undo this by subtracting 15 and we're going to do that from both sides. Okay? So we're subtracting 15 but that doesn't trigger the rule. 15 minus 5 sorry, 30 minus 15 is 15. And now we have 3x is greater than 15. So we're going to divide by 3 on both sides because x is being multiplied by 3 so we undo that or the inverse of that or the opposite of that is to um, divide by 3. These cancel out or become 1 and x is greater than 5 because 3 fits into uh, 15 5 times. So very similar problem but now we have a negative 
we have a negative uh, 3 over here. So we're going to subtract 15 from both sides again. These cancel out or become 0. 30 minus 15 is 15. And so then now we're at negative 3x is greater than 15. So we have to undo this multiplication by dividing by a negative 3. So this does trigger. We're dividing by a negative 3. So that's going to trigger us to switch the sign. These will still cancel out, this, cancel out the same way, and we're left with x. Negative 3 will, fits into positive 15 negative 5 times. Oh, sorry, my pen is being a little weird there. Let me see if I can write that again. Negative 5 times. So we get different answers. Uh, they're different problems. But again, the, the point is when do we use that extra rule? Let's do another one. So um, here we have x divided by 3 minus 6 is less than or equal to 2. And on the right, we have x divided by a negative 3 minus 6 is less than or equal to 2. So let's go ahead and add 6 over here. And these will cancel out or become 0. 2 plus 6 is 8. So we end up here with <clears throat> x divided by 3 is less than or equal to 8. So in order to undo this division that's happening to x, we have to multiply by 3. Multiply this by 3. What we do to one side, we do to the other. These cancel out or become 1. And you have x is less than or equal to 8 times 3, which is 24. All right, so let's compare that with this one. So we're going to add 6, add 6, we get 8, just like we did on the, on the other problem. And so now we have x divided by a negative 3 is less than or equal to 8. So just like we did, we're going to now multiply, but this time it's by a negative 3. When we do that, that triggers us to switch the sign. These cancel out, and you're left with just x here. Oops, sorry, my pen's being weird again. There we go. Uh, 8 times negative 3 is negative 24. So notice um, these are, are different problems. This one ended up being negative, and the direction of the inequality has changed. All right, so the other thing that comes up very frequently on the GED is solving inequality word problems. And I always try to have students use the template um, or the formula y equals mx plus b. You can use this to help guide your thinking. And the way that this works is you have like the total it could be equal to or greater than or less than or less than or equal to the rate, which is the slope. Slope is, is a rate, a variable amount, which is going to be x, uh, plus or minus a fixed amount, which is b. And so you have y equals mx plus b, or y is greater than, or y is less than. This format will help you a lot on the GED. A lot of the word problems, especially the, the ones where they af ask you to graph or read a graph, this format will help you. So there's another video specifically on this. Uh, I would make sure you have watched that before you've done this as well. And let me look down here, uh, show you down here where I've got some words that you can look for to help you understand in the word problem something that's going to be the equal to each of these four items, the total, the rate, the variable amount, and the fixed amount. Okay, so for the total, you want to look for words like budget, goal, total. For the rate, look for words like each, every, or per. For the variable amount, this is often what they're asking for. Keep that in mind. Um, and the fixed amount, look for words like flat fee, initial fee, startup, um, baseline cost, something like that. So let's go ahead and do two problems as examples. So a woman would like to take a taxi. She has $25. The initial fee for a ride is $3, and it is 1.5 per mile. What inequality represents the situation? So notice you're not solving 
for this. And this is what I often see on the GED is that they're actually not asking you to figure out the number of miles that she can go. In many respects, that's easier than answering this question. Um, I can often get students, sometimes even in their head, can determine the answer, but this is a whole different thing. You're looking at the inequalities, so that's where this y equals mx plus b is going to come in handy. So let me spread this out a little bit, and we will place um, words to it first and then numbers. So this is the total. Here for us, it's going to be an inequality. It's no longer an equal sign. Okay, here's our rate, and here is our variable amount, so something that can change, and then over here is our fixed amount. Okay, so now let's go back and read the problem. A woman would like to take a taxi. She has $25. The initial fee for the ride is $3. Okay, boom, ding, 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 initial fee, $3. That's the word that you can use to, to come up with fixed, or that's equal, equal to the fixed amount. And then it's 1.5, it should be $1.50 per mile, sorry. Um, that is gonna be your rate, so that goes here, okay? Now, we have to determine, is, does $25, is that equal to the variable amount or is that equal to the total? And there aren't words in this one, but I hope that it's clear that th she has $25, meaning that that's what she has to spend, that's sort of her budget. Um, and so this is what we have. So now you have two other choices to make, and you can kind of see these here in the options. Uh, the choice is the direction of the inequality, and the other choice is whether or not this is plus or negative. Um, and so I'm going to use some other words to help you here. If this is her budget, on the right here, this is how she spends her money. Let's call it just the spending. Okay? And this is often the trick that I find gets uh, students to have this click. So let's tackle the inequality first. So if you think about it, can, can she spend more than her budget? In other words, can her spending be greater than her budget? And the answer is no, right? So it has to be this way. So the budget has to be greater than her spending. Now, can she spend exactly the amount of money that she has? Um, and the answer is yes, she could. So it's going to be equal to. Okay, um, and then you want to look over here for, is it going to be plus or, or minus 3? And if you think about it, the spending, she's going to have to spend $3 to get into the cab or the taxi and use it. So this is going to be plus. Um, <clears throat> I can go ahead and solve this here in a second, and you'll see how we would go about solving it. Um, and so our answer, if we look, is going to be C. So let me take just a second and, and let's solve this one. So 25 is greater than or less, sorry, greater than or equal to $1.50x plus 3. So uh, let me, allow me to narrate this the way that it was. So it, as soon as she gets in the cab, she has to spend $3. That means that she has just um, $22 left over. And it's going to cost her a dollar fifty per mile. So you would divide a dollar fifty on both sides. Notice these are positive, so we're not going to have to switch the sign. And what is twenty-two? And how many times this a um, dollar fifty? Let me get. Okay, so here's the calculator. Let's do 22 divided by $1.50. Don't need the zero, but let's put it in anyway. So she could go 14.6 uh, miles. Um, okay, and that would be the answer. So, but again, oftentimes on the GED, they actually want you to be able to write the formula. So let's do one more. 
Jose has $37 to buy books. The website will charge $5 for each book and $4 to ship all of the books, which inequality represents the situation. So same thing. We're going to use y equals mx plus b. Again, it's not going to be an equal sign. It's going to be an inequality. Um, but it's often the total or the budget, however you want to think of it, is going to be greater than or equal to the rate times some variable amount plus a fixed amount. All right, so let's go back and read the question and plug the numbers in. Jose has $37 to buy books. The website will charge $5 for each book. So that word each means rate. So that goes here, five goes here, um, and $4 to ship all the books. So they don't use a word, but if he's shipping all the books, however many he purchases, that's a fixed amount. And so again, your, your face was this $37 the total or is $37 the variable amount? And it's going to be $37. The variable amount <coughs> is X. That's what we're trying to solve. It's the number of books that he can purchase. So now we have to find the inequality. So again, I encourage you to think of it in terms of words. So if you have a budget and over here is the spending. Sorry, my pen is being a little weird. Okay, so there's the spending, which can be greater. Um, in this case, again, you want the budget to be greater than the spending. You cannot have spending be greater than the budget. So and this is where I'm actually reading right to left. Spending greater than the budget, that doesn't work. Um, so that isn't going to work. What we want is the budget to be greater than the spending. Or if we read it from right to left, the spending less than the budget. And so that little trick can often help students, okay? Then you have to ask yourself, can he spend equal to? And of course, all of the options are equal to. Um, but this is what we want. We want 37 is greater than or equal to 5x plus 4, which it looks like D is our answer. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please like this video if you found it valuable and subscribe if you would like to see more videos like these. Visit the link below to passthegd.org to see more videos and learning opportunities that will help you get the highest passing score on the GED. And good luck.